am I okay with dying? No, it's not okay. <laughs> it's really not okay. And I'm hoping they'll make an exception. I'll explain that it's, I feel it's hurtful, that I must die. And if I've got a good legal team, <laughs> I think I've got a chance. I've completely fallen in love with reality and now the idea of, of leaving is just nasty. You're aware that this is a limited gig, you know, and you only have so many years in which to experience things and you want to dive into the, the ocean of all of that. The richness of reality is this constant feeding frenzy for my brain. Sometimes I think of myself as Bruce Bogtrotter, the Roald Dahl character who gorges himself on cake. I'm basically always gorging myself on reality. Everything you see all the time could be used in a painting or in a story or in a song. So I'm like a kid in a sweet shop, you know, the whole time. I just have a playful mind. It just goes and goes and goes. It demands expression. I work eight to four every day as if I'm employed by someone, which I am, I'm employed by my left brain. Painting itself is a meditation. It's a break from reality. It's like a switch. It's resetting the mind. If you don't take reality for granted at all, any of the time, then whatever is in front of you is absolutely miraculous, particularly natural beauty. Nature feels like a portal to me. When I'm in nature, I get the sense of falling through into another place, a more profound and beautiful place. All the minutia of interaction, you know, it's all the little, the tiny moments. The idea that I was trying to somehow capture it in a realistic way is too absurd to contemplate. There's a lovely Salvador Dali quote which is, the only difference between me and a madman is that I'm not mad. We are all a bit touched and it's, it's about how much courage or the lack of fear that you have with allowing sort of, let's say, more exotic elements of yourself to display themselves or whether you have a terror of that. And one wishes everyone could express themselves more freely and without needing others to okay everything you do. The most dreadful thing in, in life for me ever has been those few times when I was younger when I was not friends with myself, uh, which then means you're in solitary confinement. For at least 80 years or something, you are pretty much stuck with yourself. And that relationship needs to work. Your goal in this life is to play the hand you were dealt, which is very different in everyone's case. Whatever attributes you have, those are the ones you run with. What do you like about yourself? What do you not like about yourself? You have to weed out the stuff you don't like about yourself, and sometimes that's not easy, sometimes that's horrible. And then you have to nurture the, the things you do like. I see a person as this thing that is constantly reshaping and morphing and, you know, uh, coming together, falling apart. It's not a static. The 
famous uh, Shakespeare question is uh, to be or not to be. And obviously it's preferable to be. That goes without saying. So uh, the more realistic question or the more useful question, the more pragmatic question is how do you remind yourself to be? And that's crucial because you can drift off, you can fall asleep at the wheel of your own life. There's a vast, vast treasure trove of reality and nature and gorgeous moments. It's crucial that you do whatever it takes to keep those moments coming. The meaning of life with a capital L is life itself. Life is the meaning of life. To all of you who have contributed, for those of you who've shared our films, for those of you who have written our comments, this journey is just beginning. And we've put a Patreon link below our films, so if you would like to continue to support us, We'd love for you to donate below. Thanks so much.